I am just thrilled to introduce to you and present to some, you know, we're going to bring on the apostles and not only that, but they have the awesome management team uh, manager with them, Mr. Chia Will himself. Hey, Mr. Chia Will, how you doing? Hello, how you doing? I'm blessed and uh, I'm most thankful or whatever to be honored to be here with um, the apostles as well as yourself. Amen, amen. So, so, so you're the manager of the apostles. You have that blessed role. Can you just tell the listening audience a little bit about um, your role in um, the relationship with the apostles? Yes, ma'am. That's not a problem. Um, basically, I'm the personal manager of the world's sensational <laughs> gospel artist called the Apostles. I'm highly honored blessed by God to have them under personal management. This group is a sensational artist. Their album, everybody needs to go out and get a copy of it as soon as possible. And uh, they're going to be telling you more about it. Um, Right now we have other situations that I'm sitting down working on uh, pertaining to a tour, and I have them signed to uh, the number one gospel booking agency throughout the United States, and that's another blessing that God has bestowed upon me. So look for exciting, I'm not going to say exciting, I'm going to say look for awesome blessings and great things to come from this sensational artist called the Apostles, which everybody is about to hear in just a few seconds. Hey, man, that's what I'm talking about. Ah, we're going to let Miss Jackie go ahead and introduce everybody, and then she's going to um, introduce herself um, go ahead, Miss Jackie. Well, hey, everybody. I am Jackie Etienne, and I am known as the First Lady of One Soul Entertainment. Um, I'm here with my brothers, uh, Marlon and Ernest, and we just want to say hello and greetings from the Lord. I mean, we just we love you guys, and we appreciate being here with you today. Hey, man, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's nice to meet you, First Lady. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. It's nice to be here with you. Hey, man. Well, I tell you what, why don't you go ahead, uh, someone um, out of the group, uh, go ahead and introduce the Apostles. Uh, Marlon, you can uh, give the listening audience a taste of who the Apostles are, where you come from, where you started. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Your mic no, is hot. <laughs> no problem. First and foremost, I am uh, Brother Marlon Graves, a.k.a. Brother May. I, um, I'm originally from Springfield, Missouri. Country boy, but uh, 17 years ago I I came down to South Florida, which we call the bottom down here, and I had the opportunity after a, a tragic situation, of course, uh, health wise, uh, to later meet. I'm going to say the most blessed man I have ever graced my life, a brother, brother Ernest Faust, and with his talents, you know, a, a passion for God that he has. He has given me uh, a second chance, an opportunity to be right alongside with him, you know, raising the raising the awareness of the Lord and and what the Lord means to all of us and what He's done for all of us. And you know, by by giving His life for us on that cross. And and with that being said, it's just been a journey. You know, as the apostles, as those that do know, we've been in this industry more than ten years, almost twelve years now. And what we've done is we've been able to go through the the smaller venues, the churches, and even some of the larger venues and just really give blessings through song to the youth, to to those uh, uh, of our age and the elderly and and so on, and to the families, the people who really matter, those that have come together praising God, but even for those that are lost, you know, the main ones, the ones that we're trying to save, which is saving souls, uh, as our company or as our label is, one Pro Entertainment always says uh, it's all about to save one soul. So it doesn't matter if it's one or if it's ten thousand. We're there to save a soul, and we're gonna bring we're gonna bring somebody home to the Lord in a in in a manner of living for Him, living for Him here on earth before they are called home. So with that being said, I'm just a I'm just a brother from another mother just trying to do God's will. That's all I can say. Hey man, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Go ahead, Jack. No, I was just going to say amen on that. <laughs> amen. That's that's our motto, to save one soul. And, 
you know, when we open our mouths. And for me and for I, I would speak for my brothers, too, when we're out there, we want to just ex- exemplify uh, God and the Holy Spirit in us. And, you know, we're, we're everyday people, but at the same time, we're living for the Lord. So that's what we got to do. And hopefully if people can just see that and they can grasp grasp that idea that they can, you know, uh, receive us, receive us and receive what we're trying to do. We, you know, we just love it. We thank God so much for the opportunity. Amen. So, y'all, <laughs> um, that's that's awesome. You all been a uh, group for how long? About, about 12 years. Uh, uh, we, we actually, our brother Ernest, myself, uh, original members, and uh, young, another young, young brother by the name of uh, Aaron came together in 1998 to really form this ministry. Um, where where it is, to, uh, obviously, with that being said, over the years, things changed. Obviously, the faith changed, the, the style changed, but what didn't change was the method. Mr. Jackie, Mr. Jackie came into the ministry back in 2015. She probably, and I will say this openly, that is the unique difference of this ministry because we originally thought that this was going to be three men on this journey, a lot like uh, what you would call uh, Meshach, Manchak, and Bendigo. It's in the <laughs> fiery <fun. laughs> And uh, believe it or not, our first album actually had that album cover. Our picture was actually coming out of the, the fiery furnace, our first actual CD. And, and so, but our God had other plans. God said, no, let me do something different. And he, he brought us this angel, um, someone from the past, someone that was that graced uh, Ernest's life uh, in the R&B world, but reconnected in the in the gospel. And that's where you have Sister Jackie, our first lady, of course, uh, as she graced our presence in 2005. And since we've been a team. We, we've been... We've been there for each other in any way possible that we can. You know, and it's not been, don't get me wrong, it, it has not been on the highs and also the lows. It's been like a roller coaster. Mm. But that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's like a, that's a family. Uh, yeah, a family that's you're what family's are. You're going to have a, you're going to have the good, the bad, and everything else in between. And we've had some other faces that, that, that graced our, our, our presence too. You know, but like God says, He says that where two or more shall be in the midst, Shall also be, and sometimes you don't have other people in the midst. Sometimes they're not on the same page, and something and he'll get rid of what sh- what is not for you, or he'll just say your time is over. And, mm-hmm. and he'll also say, and he'll also say this is your time. So right now, this is our time, brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sister Jackie mm-hmm. and myself, this is our time, and, and whatever way we can connect, we can give him the glory first. I mean, that's, that's what we're doing through our music. And obviously our visionary brother Ernest is on the line as well. And you, you're going to be speaking here soon. He's going to tell you something that that, blow, that will blow your mind. He's going to tell you a testimony through his song. He's going to tell you, he's going to do the words that he personally went through. And even, you know, again, we have, each of us contribute in so many different ways. But you have to use, you have to look at the, the messenger, how, how the messenger was given the vision. And, and and he and he spread it among us. So with that being said, you know, we we just we're the apostles. We have a charge to keep. That's what we're gonna do. Amen. Amen, <laughs> amen. Let the church say amen, everybody. Hello, amen. hello, hello. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this is Ernest for the group, the apostles and and to God glory for uh, my sister in Christ, Miss uh, Faith Walking faithful broadcast Miss Naomi and to give honor to her to allow the apostles to grace this her radio uh, network to give him God the glory. And I'd like to thank my manager Will Chill Will, that's Mr. Will Simmons, and for this accepting of that, that role as manager for the apostles and of course Jackie, the first lady of one sold in it came at the apostles and also a very, very Good, good friend of mine that's been with me ever since I was in the R and B world, second mm-hmm. background vocal with me, and my brother Marlon Graves, Marlon Mays Graves, my brother, my little brother. Give God the glory for him because he's been with me through thick and thin, just like Jack. And we just bless God for what we have came, where we came from. It ain't about where we come, what we come, where we come from. It's about where we going. Come on now. And where we're going right now on this journey, we're all about to give God the glory, all the glory, because without him, we would not be nothing. 
Because Amen. without him, we'll be like a ship without a sail. That's why we give God all the glory, because without him, we cannot do nothing. That's why the CD is called The Apostles, Mission Possible, because this mission was possible with God's grace and his mercy. Come on, yeah, I, just feel, I just feel good right now, because God is doing all the time to us, even though we face adversities in our own personal life and difficulty, God will sustain all of us in whatever we're going through at this present time, only if we believe that he is going to do Amen. it. Amen. Come on now. <laughs> hey, we're going to play a little bit of your, your song so they can get a little taste of, of the apostles <laughs> before you go at your test, into your testimony. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because God is good to the apostles. We Come have on, been, we have been out there. We have been out there on the, on the test of, of the winds and the tornadoes and the storms, on the roller coaster rides, on the emotional trips, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. But what will last? What you do for Christ was only last. Come on now. If you in for the entertainment of this thing, it ain't gonna last. But if you in it for the give God the glory and God, God I live and God I die. You will be sustaining in this business called gospel gospel about right. saving souls. This business is called saving souls. That's what the apostle is all about, to save one soul. And that model has been carrying us a long, long time because if it didn't, we would have been walking out the church a long time ago when we pulled up there and up with one or two people in the church. Mm-hmm. But giving God the glory, our motto sustained us and keeping us, as we say, to save one soul, because if we can perform like a 10,000, as we do in the church, in the, it, wherever we perform that if, that, if that person, we could get that one person, that one person, to give their life to Christ, that day, that time, that night, that moment, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Amen. Come on, God. Come on, now. So, so, mm. so tell us a little bit about God's word and introduce that song. We're going to play a little bit of that for them. But God's word, when I wrote that song, giving God the glory. Because my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord when it comes down to a lot of pastors, bishops, and elders. Because my eyes, my, my eyes have seen some stuff that is was untrue to people. Because when I wrote that, I was going through a situation in my life that ministers and, and people is not being fair to the people of God. Okay. They're robbing, they're stealing, and they, they're taking advantage of the congregation of the people of the church by stealing, taking their money, uh, by manipulating to sex and whatever the case may be. Wow. But giving God the glory, let God will be done, because he, he put that in my heart, and he told me to write it, and he told me to sing it boldly. And he told me to put it in a way right. that the people will understand it. If the, the music will grab you, the, the, the beat will grab you, but the music, the lyrics will grab you. Because once you hear God's word, God's word will never change. God's word will never die. God's word remains the same. That's God's word. Well, I tell you what, I heard this song here, and I was like, oh, my. That's a song of warning right there. That's that warning before destruction. Hey, that'll save a soul right there. If you take oh, no. heed to the song, you know what I'm saying? That message, that, that message may be bold, and it's, it's absolutely bold, and it's, and it's absolutely powerful because the bottom line is, you know, if you're not right, get right. You know how they say get right or get left. That's right. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to play a little bit of the apostles, um, uh, God's word. I want you all to enjoy God's word. Amen. Uh. The Bible says, they will come in my name. They will prophesy in my name. They will heal in my name. And they will cast out demons in my name. This is for the fake ones. All you fake pastors, all you fake elders, all you fake bishops gonna get what's coming to you. Fake 
with no Sunday show Showing off your Sunday clothes Could you do it for the money, liar Cash rule everything around you, fire What consume you, better retire Better make it miss before your time is expired Fake preacher, you are down to the wire It's alive. Amen. And that was the apostles. I tell you what, that message was hot. Hey, go ahead on. You can make your comment. Well, I just wanted to say this to all those that just heard that song. You know, that song is a test for for those not just in the in the congregation. It's a test for the cool self. Too many times we are too afraid to admit that we are wrong. Those that are in leadership positions or in positions where they they have control or, or they're in positions where they can they can tell somebody something, just anybody will hear it and say amen to. And what we have to understand is that word is just as as to us who are listening for listening to, to the pastors and the preachers and the, the deacons and anyone else that's in some type of position. We just have to understand that, number one, number one, we have to understand that, that God's Word never changed from the day that it was started, when it was written, to the time that we opened it for ourselves. It's still prevalent today, and whatever you are going through, that song will tell you, whenever you are, are swayed to listen to uh, uh, somebody tell you this or somebody tell you that, and sometimes it can be your own pastor. It can be your own pastor. Remember, your pastor, whether it's a man or a woman, they still human. They are still subject to make mistakes. So you have to hold that word for yourself. And if you don't hold that word for yourself, then what happens is you be, you you begin to be be be. You can become fake yourself because when you come in out to witness to somebody, and you witness to whomever you witness to, to try to save a soul, if you don't know what you're saying, then you can be just as guilty. Be. To, to, and, and be accused of saying something that that word doesn't say. So you have to be, number one, prayed up. You have to be, another thing, you have to be in that word. You have to be committed to him. Have that relationship with him because you can get caught up just like a lot of these pastors out there. And a lot of, and I'm saying it, bishops and anybody that holds any position. Because all of them, all of them ain't right. If God's word will definitely slice, will slice like, like, like bread. And it will get definitely get to the truth. That's all I got God to say. Is going. <laughs> God is going. He is so right. He is so right. When God gave me this song, it just touched my heart because you got to be right with God. The Bible can study that. That study that word and show that self approval. You got to study the word for your own self mm-hmm. because a lot of people just saying Amen. They just say that a pastor say that can deal with up the hill. And everybody how about Amen? And but it. it you got to know the word for yourself, and you got to get a personal relationship with God yourself. When you can get a personal relationship with God yourself, so you can understand what a pastor is, is going through or what the pastor is bringing to you. Because everything glitter is not gold. That's what oh. I, a lot of people get <laughs> mis, mis, uh, get hurt in the process with pastors, and that's why a lot of people leave the congregation because of their pastor, because they put all they faith and trust 
and hope in their pastoral issues with elders. But if you just put your trust and faith in the Lord and see that pastor as a minister of God and a servant of God, you'll see him as man or woman. Man or woman, not God. Oh. And that's what that's what God will they need us from God's word to teach things to the people, minister to the people through sons. That's what the word it was. That's how it came out to be God's word, because that's what God gave it to. Amen. And I think a lot of pastors don't want their people to look at them like they their God. And people tend to do that. And that's a bad place to be in. Because because they can't falter. They are human and they don't mean to hurt you. And I don't think pastors have a heart. Some of them might do, but I don't think most of them do. <laughs> but because um, you do have the ones that call themselves or whatever the case may be. But you really have true men and women of God that mean the people well. But at the same time, they could be wrong. And I don't think they mean to be wrong and hurt you, but sometimes they could be wrong. You know, God don't always reveal things to them and don't always show things to them pertaining to your life and your call that God has for you. And um, like mm-hmm. you say, they have to know the word for themselves. So there's somebody out there listening, and I don't know which one of y'all want to answer this next question, but there's someone listening out there that has been church hurt. And so I want you to uh, I want you to inspire that person, you know, to let them know why they should go back to a church, and um, okay. the importance of having their personal relationship intact, so that they could stay amongst the believers like God has called us to. Go ahead. Uh, I will address it. I believe that if you've been hurt by ch- uh, church, as, as they would say, church folks, some people are saying they're all churched out. Um, I think. We have to remember, again, that the man or woman of God is a human being, and nothing is good in this flesh. Nothing at all is good in this flesh, so we have to stay in the spirit. And the only way we can stay connected to our spirit, for one, is you got to pray in the spirit, and you got to read the Word of God, you got to meditate on the Word. And I feel like if you are submitted to your man or woman of God, you're, you know, you're under uh, a, a, a teaching where you are submitted, you totally submit it to this man or woman of God. If they lead you wrong or, or if they do something wrong, you tell God on that person. Because to me, they are accountable. They're accountable to God. You did what you were supposed to do. I, I used to have issues with, you know, you're, you're paying your tithes and you're doing all these different things and your pastors are doing whatever. But at the same time, you follow what God word says. If it's a God, God word tell you to tithe. You're supposed to do that. Um, you're supposed to love your brother. You're supposed to love your neighbor. Um, these things, this is the word of God. Now, if these people turn around and hurt you, God knows. Vengeance don't belong to us. So, you know, for I hope that I can encourage any individual out there that has turned away from church because someone hurt them. Just remember that person, that was not God. That was not, they weren't behaving like God. They were acting out in the flesh. And you, you can't allow that. You, you can't let someone steal your opportunity uh, to be in the kingdom. You know, it, yes, people are human. They're going to make mistakes. You're so right. But thank you for God's grace, God's mm-hmm. grace, God's grace. And, you know, and so, yeah, that's that's what I would suggest. you got to go back. You, not necessarily if you don't want to go back there. That's up to you. But at right. the same time, you just got to pray to God and see what God says to do. Right. That is so true. <laughs> That's so true. Hey, it's can, true. Yeah, one of the other ones, tell tell the listening audience, um, you know, if they have left the church and they left angry, you know, let them know how they can go back in the right standing. What's the pro- what's the proper procedure to go back and to restore your place in the body of Christ? Go ahead. You want me to address that? Um, are you or either one of the other guys can do it. Marlon, you can, whichever one. Okay. Well, I, I personally would say, first and foremost, you you have to have that initial conversation with God. Even if it's just sitting down and, and just praying to yourself, you have to trust yourself just enough to say, thank you, Lord, for coming back into my life. You have to be in a position where you can it's just only you and him. Because whoever is trying to help you, if you can't hear them to receive the word through them, then how, how, how are you going to hear his word? So developing that, that 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 understanding that it is a personal relationship, and that you can talk to him, that trust is between you 
and heal. Father, today, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for all that you've done for us and what you're doing right now. And if given the opportunity, God, I'll tell the whole world that you alone, you are God. Cause you're sovereign and holy and holy That's who you are That's why today we've come to declare it Nobody like you, Lord That there's nobody Nobody like you Searched all over But I can't find nobody Nobody like you, Lord. You are God. You are God. Oh, yes. And we declare you holy. We declare you righteous.